Hey YouTube, it's Robert Hall and in today's video we're going to talk about the Godox 8400 Pro. I know it took me a little bit longer than expected to get this 8400 Pro video up. Let me give you a real quick explanation in this product. This is the 8400 Pro. This is the second light in the Pro series of lights following the 8600 Pro which launched earlier this year. The Pro series is designed to be the best that Godox can offer in terms of recycle speed and color quality and build quality and light distribution quality and it borrows a majority of the functionality from the 8600 Pro such as that color stable mode such as a one second recycle time such as a brighter 30 watt LED So it's very, very similar to the 8600 Pro, just in a bit more compact and less powerful size. So let's talk about power and how it compares to some of the other products. First up, we'll compare an 8200 with the bare bulb, not this round head, and the 8400 Pro. The 8400 Pro was one stop more powerful than the 8200. That's not surprising. This is 400 watts, this is 200 watts perfectly efficient explanation there, although this is doing it with a little bit better light quality because of this updated bear ball. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, this improved light quality, check out some of my previous videos on the 8600 Pro. And in comparison to an ADB2, it is almost identical. The ADB2 was a little bit more powerful in direct modifiers, but they were exactly equal when put in a reverse modifier. And most impressively was its comparison to the 8600 Pro. The 8400 Pro was 0.4 to 0.6 stops less powerful than the 8600 Pro in a few different modifiers that I tested as well as just bouncing it. And I think that's impressive because this is two thirds the wattage of the 8600 Pro, which just means that this is a little bit more efficient at delivering light than the 8600 Pro. It's a little bit more efficient at turning that wattage into light output. Here's a quick size comparison. You can see that the 8400 Pro is a good deal smaller. The only place where it's similar in size is right here at the mount. The bulb is smaller, the body is smaller, the battery is smaller, everything about it is just a little bit smaller. It comes in about two pounds lighter than the 8600 Pro, which just makes this more manageable, especially if you're trying to boom it. Um, with this, I don't even recommend putting this on a boom stand, to be honest, because the slightest breeze on a modifier can send that sucker twirling. Uh, the 8400 Pro is a bit more manageable to pack, it's a bit more manageable to lift or carry on the end of a monopod, and it's a bit more manageable to put on a light stand and walk away with. You can use a little bit less counterweight. So overall, it's just a lot easier to deal with for only a little bit less power. This size hits a perfect sweet spot for me because for about a year now, if I'm outside balancing in bright conditions, then I've been using the ADB2. I'm not really using the 8600 Pro outdoors too often, unless I just know I'm gonna have a long day outside. Since they're identical in power, this slots in perfectly, but I don't have to sit there and assemble it, you know, tear down my 8200s, toss the Fresnel heads to the side, find the bare bulbs, put those in, click it all together. I have these little protectors that I have to take off and then put back on. So it's just a way simpler process for the same power output. Now let's talk about the modularity for a second. Right now this has the Bowens mount adapter. It comes standard with this Godox proprietary mount and this protector which you cannot put on once you adapt it to the Bowens adapter which kind of sucks. Make your only reflector that you get with it useless because I imagine most people if you're in the Godox lineup then you're using Bowens mount modifiers. So I really wish they would have found a way for this to attach even if you put this Bowens mount on. But if you do want to protect the bulb, then you're going to have to use the 8600 Pro, this reflector, and reflector cap. That will fit on perfectly. It looks like it's made for it, and all of a sudden this thing looks huge and just as big as the 8600 Pro. This Bowens mount attachment attaches directly to the body of the light with four screws that are included. Uh, there's some more elements of modularity here. You can remove this bottom stand with a large flathead screwdriver. They include this little handle, which you can mount down here to the bottom. I don't plan on using this handle. I don't see what's so hard about moving the light like this. There's also some adaptability, but I didn't get any of those accessories. Not that I would have been able to do anything with it because they have a Pro Photo adapter and a Brown Color adapter, but I don't have any Brown Color or Pro Photo modifiers. So while the Bowens mount does kind of increase the girth, I kind of like what they did with the adapter here because if you're coming from 
all pro photo lighting then you can just put the pro photo adapter here and then keep all your modifiers it's just really efficient if you're coming from another system speaking of pro photo modifiers when i did my 8600 pro comparison to the pro photo b1x the 8600 pro was about 0.6 stops more powerful and since I tested in the same modifier, the 8400 Pro is actually equal or a tiny bit brighter than the Profoto B1X, which is impressive considering it's smaller, it's lighter, and you can adapt it to Profoto modifiers. So if you're coming from the Profoto system as a lot of users are, then you've got a really simple path that you can still utilize all of your Profoto modifiers. In checking the color accuracy, I moved up through the whole power range and saw only a 50 Kelvin shift just like the 8600 Pro. So that was really impressive again, but at this point, I, I believe everything Godox publishes on their specs because they've just delivered over and over and over again. One second recycle time. Woo! That works. One adjustment they made to the outside of the body is that the power button is not on the bottom like it is on the 8600 Pro. Instead, they moved it back to the side. Now, the complaint with it on the side was that sometimes it would turn on while it was packed. So now, when you turn on the light, you have to move this dial in order to unlock it. Otherwise, it'll just turn right back off. My first weekend working with this light, I did not challenge it at all. I was in a lot of cloudy environments. I was mostly indoors all day. Didn't really ever go over a 16th power. But the last weekend that I worked with it, I got to put this to the test in really bright conditions, like 85 degree day, super humid, um, and I was shooting into the brightest portion of the sky and having no issues balancing this. I was, you know, around a half power, half and plus 0.3, so I was definitely pushing it but not having any trouble balancing it. Now it's important to note that when I'm shooting, my light is usually very close to my subject, at least when I'm doing my weddings and portraits. So I'm using this really close and that's why I'm able to get that result. If you have to pull your light away from your subjects a lot and you're trying to use high speed sync outdoors, you're still gonna wanna opt for something bigger like the 8600 Pro. Another note on power, this goes all the way down to 1256, which means you can get it to the same power output as a single 8200, which is good because there's sometimes where those 8200s are almost too powerful if you're using them indoors. So to be able to get this down to that same output is really good. All right, so this is what I always end up getting a ton of comments on, and that is, would you buy X or X, or which is good for who? So we're gonna go over that real quick. First up, the 8200, still the most versatile single light option that you can get. This is still my favorite lighting product, and I don't think that's gonna change anytime soon. This is great for anybody who is looking for a single light that can do a lot of work. The only fault that this has is it's sometimes it's not bright enough outdoors when using it in bright conditions. But if you get a second one that gives you the flexibility to get into the ADB2, I would suggest this setup, two 8200s and an ADB2, for anyone who is looking for that versatility of using multiple lights really quickly indoors, but they also need a setup that can bring them power outside for some close portrait work. That's where the ADB2 is really good. But I think where the discussion is most interesting is between these two pro models because if you're looking at either of these, you're looking at them for their perks such as the really stable color and the really fast recycle time. For a majority of shooters, I would say the 8400 Pro is a better option. It's cheaper, it's smaller, it's lighter, and it's adaptable to other brands of modifiers. It has all those perks and all you give up is a half stop of power. The only reason I would suggest the 600 Pro over the 8400 Pro is if you know that you need the extra light output and you're willing to put up with the extra space and weight and putting it up on a stand and the extra weight that that's gonna take on the bottom of the stand, if you're willing to deal with all that for the extra power, then of course, go with the 8600 Pro still. For my use case, I haven't been using the 8600 Pro at all for weddings, so that's not even part of my discussion. I've been using the ADB2 for my outdoor light. I'm basically going to continue using my 8200s because I love the flexibility of using those indoors, but I'm gonna ditch the whole ADB2. I'm not gonna carry it. I'm not gonna carry the bare bulbs. I'm gonna use all round heads on my 8200 and I'm gonna use 
8400. I'm gonna keep this in the car on a stand. And when I'm going out for those portraits that are in really bright conditions, that's when I'm gonna break out the 8400 Pro. I hope you guys got all the information you need to decide if the 8400 Pro is right for you. It's linked in the description below if you're interested in buying it. Like this video if it helped you out. Subscribe if you'd like to see more of my videos. Comment below with any questions. And until next time, keep on shooting YouTube.